Yo, what is up, everybody? It is your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video. Today, we're gonna be looking at this sample type trap beat that I made. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it a Youngling X Wonder Girl X Kendrick Moore type of beat because a lot of you guys said that's what it sounded like, and I didn't know what to call it. So let's just go ahead and say it's a Youngling X Wonder Girl type beat because it kind of sounds like that. It has that nice, you know, ambient sound, sample type stuff, but then it has a the hard drums and everything like that, but still kind of smooth and. Still got the trap feel to it with a little bit, you know, like I said, Wonder Girl S and some Young Lane type stuff to it. So, but yeah, so what I'm going to do in this video is break down each individual part, show you guys how I made the beat, what I did to make the beat, and yeah, give you some tips and tricks to make better beats that you can use the techniques yourself. So, I'm going to mute my mic and I'm going to play you guys the beat so you guys can hear what it sounds like. So, here we go. This is different. different. So yeah, there we go right there. Very simple type beat, nothing special to it, but I did do a few things to get them sounds that I tried to get. So we're gonna play the first part. We're gonna talk to you about the sample part. Now, unfortunately I deleted the um, Edison that had the sample in it, but I will definitely make a video on how I sampled the beat and how I did my samples because I've learned a little bit about sampling through you guys and other videos and experimenting. And I found a pretty cool technique uh, for me that works it's very simple a lot of people do it I've been doing it's, it's, it's pretty much the way I've been doing it but I kind of finessed it and kind of got it down packed the way it works excellent for me so I'll show you guys how I sample and show you some other techniques of sampling if you guys want that leave a comment in the video below and also thumb up the video if you guys want to see something sample related but anyway here's the beat it is called Nightwalker I don't know where it's from it's just a bunch of samples I had I went through them and I hit heard this I said hey I want that so I found this part right here and I Pretty cool part. Um, pretty simple, but I reversed it so it has that. This is different. Play this. Play that. Well, let me. This is different. And I also changed the timing to four bars, and I brought the pitch down to negative four hundred cents to kind of make it a little bit deeper because without it, it will sound a lot high pitch. And then I add some gross beats to it and use that one half speed, of course, because that just gives it more flavor. Without it, it just sounds kind of fast. Is it different? See, it just drags along with, with that gross beat on it. So I really like that. So that's what I did with the sample. And also, um, the regular part plays this way, and throughout the beat, it plays the reverse part. So the intro has the normal way and in the the forward way and in the actual verse and chorus has the reverse part which is what i did so next up is the 808 so i'm just gonna go down the list this time um this is the 808 nebula from the space sauce volume one kit if you don't if you won't don't get that kit down below it's my best it's our best selling kit me and sticky beats really poured our hearts into that kit and you guys absolutely love that kit space sauce volume q is coming near the end of this month and we have some more dope products both free and paid coming up soon and some giveaways for all of our customers as well so like these are actually gonna be real giveaways not no get a free product like like freaking hardware stuff 
So make sure you be supporting us that way so you can get on these free giveaways. Excuse me, I had a burp soda. So I just made a little pattern. One thing I did differently than I normally do is I truncated it. So basically that means like in certain parts of the beat, like when the snare hits, it has like a little pause. So it. See how it has that little imp, imp, has a little pause in it. That just give it like a little bit of, that gives room for the snares and the hit, kick, uh, kick drum to kind of push through. So I did that, which if you know, if you ever listen to that like Young Lin and Wonder Girl, people like that, um, or do styles, that type of beat, they had a little pause in between their their drum 808s and their kicks or whatever, right before the snare, so the snare could actually crack through really hard. I added a decapitator to the 808, and like I said, I got it set to four drive with about 40% on the E setting, which is, I think, EMI, if I'm not mistaken. And that just gives a little bit of grit to it, so without it, it sounds like this. Kind of actually smooths it out a little bit. Like, it actually smooths the sound out a lot better with the distortion, which is, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it don't, sometimes I do, but it just makes it a little, a little bit more smoother, in my opinion. Plus, since I'm about to mix down to about 40%, it's not as strong. If I put it to 100%, it just be like completely distorted, straight up distorted, and you don't want that. Then my Fruity Limiter for my side channel, my kick drum, which is normal. And this limiter right here, L2, which I bought not too long, a couple days ago, um, pretty good limiter one of my favorite limiters out there like it's my favorite limiter like l2 is like one of the best limiters ever made um it's actually modeled after their l2 hardware limiter which is amazing but like four grand i think three to four grand for that limiter so uh, but you know ways made the plug-in version of it for them and i need to, i need this for volume pretty much to get a louder because my 808 is all the way up to the top as you see but if i take the limiter off it's super quiet So I had to figure out a way, how can I get it louder without it clipping and distorting? So I said, oh, just throw a limiter on it. Like, a lot of people don't look at that. Like, sometimes you can use a limiter to actually get volume in your kick drum, snares, and percussive instruments. Just throw a limiter. Yes, it's going to cut the peaks off and limit the peaks, but you can still bring up the volume. Since it's an 808, distort, distorting the 808 is not going to hurt it. It's actually going to make it, you know, somewhat enhance it a little bit. So once I add the limiter to it, you can actually hear how it gets louder and actually sits better in the mix. So a limiter can definitely help you out and save you in a pickle. <laughs> so try it out. Use a limiter. I go in more detail about that in, a, in my kicking 808 mixing tutorial coming up soon. So I go more. Well, you guys going to see how I really get down with that. Next up is a hi-hat. Just a simple little hi-hat out of our epic drum kit, which is only on sale right now. You need to get it. But um, just an epic drum kit. It's just a simple, like, tempo snare. Or hi hat. So basically, what it's doing is it's just going with the it's going with the metronome. So just keeping that tempo. So just ten, ten, one, two, three, four, one. That's how I was doing. Just keeping the tempo going. Then I added another snare that's just kind of like here and there, you know, different places. And I used the randomizer feature, which is Alt R, and you get the randomizer. And I randomize the pan as you can see. So it's just random, or you can do it yourself. It don't matter. But You know, that's also from the um, that's also from the Epic Kick as well. So if you want this, both these hi hats, it's in the Epic Drum Kit or the Epic Premium Edition Drum Kit. Um, and I think for both of them, I didn't do nothing but cut some highs. I didn't do nothing to the third one. I didn't do nothing to neither one of them actually. They're just plain Jane. Cause I mean, they sounded good because they already been processed really heavily. And I said me and Sicky Beats, well, Sicky mostly did the drums. He did, he 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 killed the drums, man. I tell you, you know, I did the presets. He did the drums, but he processed the fuck out of these things and made them sound amazing. Like his process and the way he processes his stuff is amazing. So if you want that Sicky Beat sound? Get the drum kits now, cause he, he he put a lot of work into his stuff. He he really takes pride in his stuff, and you know he wants to give you guys quality foremost than anything. And um, don't hit me up while I'm recording whoever that was but anyway um so that's that right there next up is the snares which is two different snares layered together once again from the epic snares so we have that one and then we have this one which is actually a trap snare i've, I've been had but what i did to one what i did to both of them is i put reverb on both of them so both of them have the same amount of reverb except the 
the epic one, the, the regular one, the more harder, not the trap one, has about 40% reverb, as in the snare has about 10% reverb. So about 10% reverb. And what I did was I added more reverb to the lower one because I wanted I wanted the the main like the main reverb, which is the 808 one, to really stand out. Had the crack and the the, the the snap of the beat, so you can really hear it and catch it and catch the beat and all that. But I wanted the regular snare to be more of a reverb a reverb snare. So that um, snare right there is basically just giving the room, giving the space, giving the room noise and all that good mess right there. So that's what that snare is doing. And combined together, like I said, I can blend them in to get a better thing. So if you want to put reverb on a snare, I highly suggest layering your snare and putting a lot of reverb on one snare and um putting a little bit on the other snare, on the main snare, and then kind of blend in the one with a lot of reverb. It just gives it more texture and more vibe. So together, they sound like You know, it just has that nice ambience. But you can definitely do that with a regular reverb. But you know, I'm all I'm all about layering and using my plugins in serial or in stages. You know, it just like it makes stuff work harder than it having to, you know, make one plugin work too hard. You know what I'm saying? And also it saves CPU stuff and all that good mess. So that's just me personally, but you know, you ain't gotta do it. Next up is the Omnisphere patch. Let's see if Omnisphere gonna load up anytime soon. I really should I need to get me a new hard drive so it can load up faster. Woo, 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 getting old over here getting old there we go um it's just a harmonical bell piano bell so pretty little bell sound you know you probably can get a bell like this in nexus too whatever you know what i'm saying but that's all that is that's just like a little ear tickle so when it plays it just it just plays every so often, like just randomly throughout the beat. Like I said, the reason I did that, because like I said, in my arranging tutorial, which you need to check out, by the way, um, I mentioned, you know, every eight bars, do something a little bit different. Just do something a little bit different. Have fun with it. Just, you know, experiment. Um, The reason I say do that, because, you know, it just gets like a little bit of ear tickle. Like I said, like how, how me and Sinky Beast be describing it. Like when you listen to the beat, it's that little... Uh, a little in it, you know, to kind of just like, you know, tickle your ear and kind of wakes you up, you know, make you go, oh, what was that? Okay, that's cool. You know, but you ain't got to make it all crazy and do crazy drops and glitch effects and all that, like going crazy. That sometimes gets kind of annoying and unnecessary, but just a little bit here and there can definitely keep the interest of the listener, both the artist and the person who's buying the artist's song. So, you know, you can do that. Next up is a kick drum, which is my favorite kick drum to use. I love it. Um... It just sounds good. Uh, what I did to it, I cut the lows and the highs and the 808s. The highs and the 808s. I cut the lows and the highs, so around 1K at the highs and about 50, 50 hertz at the lows, just to kind of make it more focused in. Because what that just sounds like. And then with the, the EQ, a little focused in. And then I decapitated it because, come on, decapitated is my favorite distortion plugin. I love the sound of it. It's very vintage and more like darker sounding distortion than other ones. It's not really a bright distortion. It's more of a dark distortion, in my opinion. That's how I can describe it. And I like the way it looks, too. It just looks cool. So I got it set up to the EMI setting. Got it set to 7 on the drive and got it 50% mix. And that just gives a little bit of grit to the the kick drum. Um, I'm a fan of distorting my plugins, distorting my sounds. Um, I love distortion. I'll distort anything. I don't care. Distortion is definitely the way I go. That's how I get my sound and my tone. A lot of people don't distort their stuff. Me, I distort almost everything if I can. I don't distort everything, but most of my sounds have a touch of saturation, a touch of distortion. That's not to simulate analog or anything like that. It just, I love the sound of distortion. I just do. So without distortion, sounds like this. Sounds good. Distortion. You know, it's not clipping, it's not, it's nothing like that. It just, it's louder, it's got a nice little, little nice to it. And it sounds good to me. And it, in, in context of the mix, it really does sound good. I mean, Y'all hear the beat, you can hear it, it sounds good. Next up is the vocal chants. And I also had a different eight of, uh, drum pattern, so it's like every so often like a different drum pattern punches in, which is pretty cool. Um, Next up is these two samples, which is my normal, you know, kind of Travis Scott, Kanye West type of chant. Um, the little reverb on there, nothing special there. But the other one is the the one y'all saw in the video. <laughs> we all laughing at everybody laughing at me, but I don't care. Y'all can laugh at me in the day. It made a cool sound. What I did to my my voice, is I put picture on it. 
distorted my voice because you know a little distortion put a little reverb in it and then i used my um eq to cut some of the highs and some of the lows to kind of focus it in the valhalla reverb is my standard reverb should have been set though to k okay, that's weird oh i messed up there oh well so I, I, you know 40 percent give a little little ambience you got a little decapitator and then got a little picture on it so that is definitely dope right there so you know that works amazing right there and the baby's in the other room crying as all normal oh that girl's so crazy but anyway um so that right there and, and put together just like and i pan them both left and right to kind of get some separation between the two um chants you know and like i said it's just like I say, it's just a little, it's a little bit different here and there. It's nothing special. Um, not trying to go crazy with it. Just want to leave it, you know, to where it has that kind of vibe to it. I could have used the randomizer tool and randomized the the one I did. That might have added a little bit of interest, but I decided not to. But you can try that experiment. If you do layer two different chants, have one kind of being modulated all over the place, and have one just kind of centered or in one one space, and you add some interest to your beats. Trust me, I've done it before, and I think it will work in most of you guys' cases. Um, next up is this choir that you all, you guys were always asking about. Everybody in the comments just spam. Well, the choir, what choir was that? What choir was that? Is the Omnisphere patch? I will show you the exact Omnisphere patch so you guys can get it yourself. Um, like I said Omnisphere is definitely dope for making these type of sounds. Um, for choirs, Omnisphere is amazing. It's called Boy Choir E E E S Up. So. I mean, it's definitely a dope choir. Um, only thing I did to it was a little EQ, low pass, high pass, nothing special there. Y'all know how I do. And that's pretty much it. And it just comes in only on the choir and the chorus part. Just playing some standard C, mi C, mi C minor, C sharp minor chord. So nothing special there. Then I got this other hi hat, which is like the the energy hi hat that I call it, or where you know the beats start picking up. That's this hi hat. So that's all that is with a little EQ cutting some of the highs because I think it had like a little too too much highs in it for me in my taste, and I cut like two K all the way to two K the low cut. Um, I just want to make it not so like tinny and so like you know tinny in the top end and stuff like that so i cut some of the top end off just to make it more focused and that's all it is right there no reverb usually i put reverb on it or delay i didn't i just kind of left it plain jane and moved on because i mean if the sound sounds good as it is don't go crazy with it that's one thing you guys gotta remember if it sounds good it sounds good move on don't sit there and try to process the hell out of it unless you didn't want to you know what i'm saying and next is my favorite part this right here That groovy bounce type of sound with an arp. Basically, it's the same arp. It's, it's this arp right here. Nope. Go to the next pattern. Oh, we got two different patterns. Stupid. So that is the eerie patch from Serum. Um, from Serum, the Space Sauce Volume One. That's <laughs> in Space Sauce Volume One. That's what that is. Turned it into an ARP, as you see. Got the gate, got the timing over here, and got it going up and down. I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, direction up, down, bounce. That's what that is. Um, which is the fast, with like a really fast timing. But I added an effect to it to give it that bounce, which is the Tremolator by Sound Toys. Like I said, this came with a bundle when I bought it. Um, very dope plugin. Very dope plugin. It's amazing. I think it's one that everybody should be using, and it just it, it gives it just it just gives like rhythm to your. It's a rhythmic amplitude modulation, basically. So it just it modulates stuff in a rhythm or a groove, and you can do swing, change your groove, change how synced it is, make it less quantized, more quantized, make it more. It has different shapes, so you can pick all these type of shapes. So you got different shapes to pick from. So I mean, it, you can get crazy sounds with this, you know. I just threw it on there, played it, tweaked a little bit of it, and just. Sounds great. It sounds great. And it gives like a level of bounce to the beat, too. And I add love filter and use the twinkle preset to make it move in between the stereo space. Because without it, it sounds like this. Which is 
<laughs> which is still good, but with that love filter on it, you get that extra level of ear tickle or, you know, interest. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. And then the arrangement wise, if we go to the arrangement, as I put a little gross beat uh, glitch too for my tape stop. Which I did make a tape stop video for you guys so you can watch that. Added some love filter in the first part of the chorus. So that is pretty cool right there. And that's pretty much it. I mean, very simple. Like I said, it got the little ear tickle right here. It goes hook, it goes intro, verse, hook. That's how it goes, and that's how I set it up. Like I said, you see, I put, add like little bit things here and there. Like one part in the middle of the beat, it actually breaks down somewhat. So it, that's kind of that's kind of interesting, kind of different, you know, something like that to kind of slow it down a little bit. And that's really it to it. Uh, I will show you guys the master chain because a lot of you guys ask. Can I show my master chain for these beats? Um, I actually have nothing on the master except the pana the panamulator, whatever it's called. Basically, what this is is basically that's pretty cool. That shows you on the back how it's linked up. Um, uh, to check my mono, check, make sure it's in mono, which I made a video about checking your mix in mono. So definitely look up that. So I was stepping back from the microphone, by the way. Um, the limiter right here is just used for the K scale, which I did find a free K scale for you guys. I'm gonna make a video on teaching you guys how to do that. And my Sonarworks Reference 3 headphone plug-in, which is basically, oh, man, I love this plug-in. I love this plug-in. I love, plug I love these people at Sonarworks. Um, I will make a video about this plug-in, but this is a plug-in that I absolutely love. And I will definitely tell you guys why I love it in a future video. But just know I use this for every mix. I use this to mix with every time. And it gives me a great mix every freaking time. Every time. Plus with the K-Scale. But then I got everything routed to my mix bus, which had all my mastering plugins. So first off, I got my FG Gray, which is a bus compressor from Slate Digital. It's modeling a SSL bus compressor, so just a little bit of SSL bus compression, um, which you guys can do. I said, but I'm making a full video on how to mix and master, so don't worry about none of these sentiment right now. Cause I'm actually gonna make a video. Where I'm gonna be remixing and remastering this exact beat because the things I did for this beat. Holy crap, I got a great match. And I'll, I'll go between the mix and the match so you guys can hear the difference. And I'll show you. I'm going to do a, a very in-detail in breakdown of how to mix a beat and how to master a beat from beginning to end for you guys. Um, So then I have my imager, which is forcing everything in the mono, which is, you know, the low end in the mono. little top end spread. Nothing special there. A EQ, just cutting down the super, super lows because you don't need them. Uh, I know there's people out there who argue with me and disagree with that, but... If you, if it's too low for your ears to hear, why even have it there? It's just gonna add noise in the bottom end. You guys to clean your mix up a lot more by doing that. So you can argue with me about that. Whatever, do what you do. It's, it's suggestive. Like I said, it's how I mix and master. Next is my virtual tape machine to give me a little bit of tape vibe from Slate Digital. Um, I love this plugin. Like I love Slate Digital plugins. I really do. <laughs> I bought them. <laughs> I just bought them yesterday. <laughs> I bought the Slate Digital plugins yesterday, and uh, I love them. I love their plugins. I mean, I don't care what nobody say about them guys. I like them. But yeah, just give a little tape vibe to it. Then I got one one limiter, which is my L2, which is doing like a, just a little bit of gentle compression, uh, limiting, just a little bit. Then I have a second limiter, which is doing the volume, which is doing, once again, just a little bit limiting. But since they're in serial or in stages, it gives a more transparent result. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that in master, my mastering video on how to do how to mix in, st in serial or stages where you do like a little bit of compression here, a little bit of compression here, a little bit of EQ here, a little EQ here, a little limiting here. Little, you know how you just do stuff in stages instead of just doing making one instance of the um, – instead of one plug-in doing all the work because one plug-in doing all the work can be, one, noticeable that you're doing it, and two, you, uh, give you less results in the end. So – I'm going to talk about that more in my video, but I'll play you the mix version versus the master. So here is the mix version. Just, you know, just mix. So let's see right here. Here comes the master version. I 
mean, the mixed version sounds really good, right? The mixed version sound the mixed version sounds good to go, right? And then the master version just sounds it got that little bit of extra sauce on it. But the main thing is, like I said, when I make the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get it loud in the mix before you master. If you get it loud in the mix, the mastering is just the polish it. That's what people think that mastering is make it louder in mastering. Hell no. You make it loud in your mix and you clean it up in mastering. That's what mastering engineers do. They don't they don't do too much. They do like little they do like one dB here, two dB here, one point five dB here. That's what they do when they're mastering. A real master engineer will do like very little. But then they, they can, you know, but they have hardware to get the volume. But main thing is if you can make it loud in the mix, the mastering is nothing. Like the mastering is just, just to polish up, clean up, and give like a little bit more volume to make it competitive, and that's all it is. So, but I'm making a full video on how to mix and master a beat completely. So it's coming, like I said, later this week, probably around Friday ish, Saturday, Friday. So be on the lookout for that later this week. But yeah, there it is, right there. There's the beat. I'm gonna be uploading the full beat so you guys can listen to the full beat as well as this. Um, so yeah. There it is. Hope you guys enjoy it. Like always, you know who it is. Your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different. Not motivated by the money, but like, subscribe, and views. And if you guys got any requests that you want me to do or anything, like I said, mixing-wise, beat-wise, uh, any type of tutorials you want me to try to make, any type of producer or artist, I definitely accommodate you guys. You just got to leave it in the comment. Let me know. I got a long list that I'm going through as fast as I can, but I'm only one person. But I would definitely do you guys the best I possibly can. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, and I will see you guys in the next one.